This is Universe IO, a brand new mod pack from the mod pack maker Cryptic. And this is a slightly different style of mod pack. It's a questing mod pack, but as you will note, we start in this void dimension. The only things around us are the black night sky and nothingness. The floor is actually made of nothingness. We do start with the hex notebook from the hex casting mod, the squirt gun manual from the squirt gun mod, the advanced peripherals book from advanced peripherals, and most importantly, we start with the quest book here from FTB Quest. Opening this up gives us access to these four quests right here, which I believe are going to introduce us to the mod pack. So uh, it says about me, uh, hi, my name is Crypt1C, also known as Cryptic, and thanks for downloading and playing Universe IO. It means so much to me. As a reward just for playing the mod pack, we get one silver coin. And then important, read me. You can only use the Ultimine key while you're holding a tool. That's something that's fairly common in quite a few mod packs. Quests with an exclamation mark are checkmark quests and contain important information, so make sure to read them. Chemicals have an EMC value equal to their atomic number. Hydrogen has an EMC value of one, helium two, etc. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in now on the quest book. That one's fairly straightforward. Then we've got creepers won't destroy blocks when exploding. However, they can still hurt you. We also have sleep speeds time, like time in a bottle. I'm very intrigued to see how this works, like how much time passes or how much acceleration is done whenever we sleep. Very interesting though. We then have the Hyper Advanced Universal Shop. You can earn coins by completing quests. Each coin tier is dependent on the difficulty of the quest. Coins are used for trading with villagers. You can right click the coins to store them in your personal money bag found in the top right corner of the player's inventory. I see that right there. We've got all these buttons. I can't press that button to make my uh, coins go up, but I can right click to store my silver in there. That makes complete sense. And then the last one here says coins have different tiers. Bronze is worse than silver, is worse than gold. That makes complete sense as well. And then finally, we have the law time. As the stars twinkled above me, I felt a sense of calm wash over me. I had been lost in space for what felt like an eternity, drifting aimlessly through the void. But now I had a purpose. The keepers had appeared to me in a vision tasking me with creating my own universe where the laws of physics and laws of magic coexist in perfect harmony. I was filled with a sense of responsibility, knowing that the fate of countless multiverses rested on my shoulders. I set to work using the power of my mind to shape the swirling gases and particles around me into the, buildings, uh, into the building blocks of a new world. I crafted galaxies and nebula, designing each one with care and precision. And with that, we complete... The first chapter, we get a tempad as a reward, which is actually quite nifty. The tempad allows you to teleport around very quickly, and we get the chapter complete sound effect. So, that is all well and good, but now we've unlocked the main quest line, and it starts with Act Zero here. So, it says, in order to obtain gluons, different quarks and electrons, simply mine the nothingness block with a void harvester. So, a little bit of a different start to a usual mod pack. Normally, you punch trees, you get wood. In this mod pack, you take your Void Harvester, along with a Philosopher's Stone and a Bronze Coin. That does mean we have Project E in the pack, so EMC is available to us. As you can see in the top left, we currently have zero EMC, but we can now take our Void Harvester and, in theory, break some of these. Now, you can, I believe, right-click to harvest here. The reason that's quite useful and I think the quest book might tell us about it. Also, real quick, if I go to options, controls, keybinds, and type in quest, you can rebind your quest book to any key on your keyboard. I'm gonna rebind mine to grave, which is the key below escape and to the left of the one key. And then that does conflict by default with FTB Ultimine, which I'm also gonna change to a button on my mouse. That just means that going forward, I don't need to have this book. I can just go ahead and press the grave key and it will open up the quest book automatically, which is very nice to see. And so uh, the reason that I think it's useful to be able to right click is because in this void dimension, there is very little gravity. If you jump, you go very high. And when you land, you do take fall damage. And so I think we kind of want to try avoid jumping at all costs. We do also appear to have a mod that changes the uh, health bar and the saturation bar. But other than that, I don't think anything else has really changed in regards to those. So we have acquired a down quark, we've acquired an up quark, and we've acquired an electron. We also need to get 
a gluon. And I believe we're just gonna get that from mining more of these nothingness blocks. Again, trying all the while not to actually fall into any of these holes, which is a little harder to do when every block has the same texture. So that got us a gluon. Next up is a proton here, and the proton is our first craft. So we do have important quests here. This one says crafting readme, and it's massive, so you cannot miss it. It says press C by default to open the crafting grid while holding the philosopher's stone. So hovering over this, you can press C, and it opens up the crafting grid. And so now we need to get a proton. Now we do have REI installed, which is the mod that adds all of the recipes on the right hand side here and allows you to search through all of the available recipes in the game. And a pretty nifty feature of it is that you can uh, view a recipe like this, but then you can click and drag that recipe into the top left corner. And now when we go back to our Philosopher's Stone and press C, that recipe is still there. We can click this little plus icon and that's gonna move all of the items to craft the proton out of our inventory and into the crafting grid. Nice, that should complete the proton quest. It does indeed. And then now we just need to get a neutron, which is made in a similar way. You can put more than one recipe here and if you have more than one recipe, all you have to do is just scroll wheel between them. So if you scroll, you can go left and right, and you can scroll between your available recipes that are locked into this little uh, recipe saving section. For us, we just need the one neutron. Fantastic. That is going to complete the neutron quest. And then we move on to creating our first atom. So the atom here is made with one electron, one proton, and one neutron. Again, we can slap that in the top left. And then we do already have 35 electrons in our inventory, and so we should have everything it takes to make an atom. Nice. Okay, so now we get two more information quests. It says, in order to obtain an everythingness block, simply right click a nothingness block with a void harvester. Okay, and then down here, it says, we lied. And this is more law. So, all cards on the table. You did this to yourself. You're not an acolyte. You won't ever be a keeper, period. That was your entry into the trials. Complete this, and you will graduate as a guardian for our worlds. You accepted the call. We never promised anything, but it has its own perks. Get to work. You need to prove everything before you are allowed anything. Interesting. And here we get to our first uh, actual element here, which is from uh, Chemlib, and that is hydrogen. This makes sense. Uh, one atom equals hydrogen. I also do quite like, I'm not quite sure what mod it is, but uh, whenever we pick something up, it gets a little bit bigger in our inventory. It's a pretty nifty little uh, animation, though. I quite like it. And then helium is just two hydrogen with the Philosopher's Stone. That makes complete sense. Let me go ahead and right click that. So that gets us the everythingness, I see. So we might need a few of those. I'm also gonna break a couple of blocks. I do wonder, can we ultimine mine this? We can't. Okay, so there's no harvesting a large amount of this all at once. I've been told that if I just shift and get close, I will harvest some of this stuff as well, which it looks like might work. Who knows? <laughs> oh no. See, the problem here is that when you get down, like I've just done, when you fall down onto a lower level, if you try and get back up, if you jump to get back up, or even if you use uh, the auto jump feature, you'll just go flying in the air and then take fall damage. So I guess I'm going to just stay down on this lower level now. Okay, so I've harvested a bunch more of these uh, gluons, uh, down quarks, up quarks, and electrons. And so uh, let's go ahead and make a bunch more of these uh, protons here. And by the way, if you shift left click on this move items button, it will move as many items as it can into these slots. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of these. We'll go for like 22, let's say. And then we'll do the same with the neutrons as well. We'll make a bunch of those. I am being told that if I make slabs out of the everythingness like this, that I can get back up to the main level without having to jump, which is totally right. Fantastic. Okay, so that's the uh, the secret to getting out of those holes without taking any uh, fall damage. And then now we should be able to make ourselves a bunch of atoms. We can. Cool. So then let's take those atoms. And I'm going to craft a few of them into helium, uh, into hydrogen. I'm not going to craft them all into hydrogen just yet because I don't necessarily know how many we're going to need. But that gets us helium. Then we need lithium, which is helium and hydrogen. I also don't know if we need to keep the uh, the previous elements that we've made, but I have a feeling those might be necessary. And so let's go ahead and craft all of our atoms into hydrogen, and then let's craft some of those into helium. And then this time we'll craft the helium with the hydrogen to make the lithium. Fantastic. Then we need beryllium. I don't think this goes on for much longer, by the way. We don't have to go through the entire chain 
uh, of the periodic table before we get to the end. So now we need to do the same again, I guess. We need to do helium and hydrogen to get another lithium. And then if we wanted the beryllium, the beryllium was hydrogen and lithium, which also makes sense. Boom, boom, and boom. It is a shapeless crafting recipe, so you can put these wherever you like. And so long as all of the correct items are in the grid, the, uh, the quest will complete. We then have boron, which you guessed it, is the same again here, but just with more hydrogen. So once again, we'll do hydrogen and helium. That's gonna get us a couple of lithiums. We'll then take one of those lithiums, turn that into a boron, and then we'll take that boron and craft it into, actually no, boron is what we want, right? It is, okay, so it looks like there are multiple ways of crafting the same element, which makes sense, actually. And I think we're getting close to where we wanna be here. This quest is called Fundamental Forces. It says right click to toggle gravity on and off for yourself, excuse me. Oh no, I have to right click the gravity item, not just in general, that makes sense. And shift right click to set the gravity for nearby entities, interesting. So gravity, as we all know, is one philosopher's stone with lithium, beryllium, and boron. And the philosopher's stone, thankfully, is never used in crafting recipes, which is very nice indeed. So we can just do this and we get our very own gravity. I don't know if we need that, so I'm gonna hold off on using it just yet, because now, yeah, there are two recipes we have unlocked. We've unlocked this recipe to craft a star, and we've unlocked this recipe right here to craft the Earth. The star is made with two hydrogen, two helium, and a gravity. Earth is made with an oxygen, a silicon, a sulfur, an aluminum, a calcium, a zinc, a magnesium, and an iron. We don't have any of those just yet, and so I'm gonna start with the star and we'll see where that goes. So the star is two hydrogen, two helium, and one gravity. Thankfully, we do have all of that ready to go. Boom, oh, and the gravity is reusable, interesting. You can craft that into a block of gravity as well. So we are carrying a star in our inventory. Right click to discover new elements. So we can right click the star to discover new elements, okay. Oh, okay, so I did have to right click to grab that uh, cosmic dust there. How does the cosmic dust work? Oh, do we right-click the cosmic dust to discover new elements? Oh, we do. Look at that. So they do go flying due to the lack of gravity, but we are getting tin, silicon, scandium, fluorine, copper, aluminum, lithium. Interesting. Okay, so we can keep doing that and keep right-clicking all of those. I don't know if we lose them if they go too far into the void. I am kind of out of inventory space, though. We don't really have... Are they going to fall or are they going to float forever? I don't think I can make a chest either, which is is unfortunate. Um, that's okay, let's go back in here and let's see if we have what it takes to make the Earth. We don't, we're missing Fe and we're missing oxygen. I was going to say that I assume we could make them, but I guess we can't. One thing we can do is we can take the gravity and right click that to disable it. Does that, oh no, I see that. Okay, that may or may not be a, a good idea. Cause we can, we can use this to turn gravity back on for ourselves. Oh no, we're good. So gravity's enabled, does that mean, oh, look at that, that's fantastic, we jump normally again. Whew, okay, so I wonder if we should just get rid of the elements that we don't need. Those look like they're not going to despawn just yet. I assume that they despawn at the normal rate that Minecraft items despawn. So, like, we don't need titanium just yet, we'll throw that out into the abyss. Neither do we need sodium or chlorine. And we also probably don't need magnesium, let me check on that though. Oh no, we do need magnesium, that's my bad. Let me grab the magnesium. So we need to turn gravity back on and then see if we can't find some iron. I don't see any iron. And we also needed oxygen as well, which I also do not see. So I think what we might have to do is just make another star and then throw that again to see if we get the right stuff. So for that, we need two more helium, which means we are gonna need more hydrogen, which means we do need to get more elements. That is completely fine. Okay, so I've made 14 more atoms. That should allow us to make a bunch more hydrogen, and then that hydrogen, of course, should allow us to make some more helium. So if we make a few he helium, we'll make three here. That should allow us to make at least one more star, potentially two more stars. Oh, we're missing one more helium. That's fine. Let's see what we get from the second star here. And we're gonna try and find some iron in this, uh, oh, there's some iron. And then we also need to find some oxygen as well, ideally. Oh, and of course, we can shift right-click with the gravity to affect 
the items around us. Interesting. Okay, that's very useful. It's a lot more useful than trying to find what we're looking for in the sky. And of course, now gravity is enabled, so we don't have to, to worry about that. I don't see any oxygen, though, which is unfortunate. So I think we are going to have to go and make one more star to see if we can't make this happen. Never mind. We totally do have oxygen. Thank you, Twitch chat. Let me grab that. Okay, so I think that might be everything that we need to make Earth. Oh, it's saying we don't have zinc or calcium. Okay, there's some calcium. Let's throw out the strontium and let's replace that with calcium. And then I don't see any zinc. So I think one more star might do the trick. Hey, there's the zinc. Nice. Okay, so that should be everything to make Earth. We should put gravity in the middle and boom, we've done it. We have crafted an entire planet and with that we have completed chapter one of the quest book it says after placing down the earth block right click it to go to earth so i don't know if we can come back but just on the off chance that we can't i'm going to right click the temp pad with this we can click run program new location and i'm going to just type void nothingness add location so now if we take our earth planet place it down and right click that should take us to Earth. And there is the Earth still here. So if I right click that, do I just go back? I totally do. We go back to nil, to nothingness. Interesting. Okay. So we can head back through to the overworld. And if we wanted to, we could right click with the temp pad, uh, click run program, and click void nothingness, and then teleport. That will open a portal for us. And when we run through that, it will take us back to nothingness again. But anyway, this is not where we want to be. We want to be back on Earth here. And in doing so, we have unlocked the next chapter of the quest book, the alpha chapter right here. Primal Age quest complete. All right. This unlocks a few more quests for us. We have Cellulose Enriched, which wants us to get one log. We have a Lump of Mud, which wants us to get one clay, one cobblestone. We need one petal, so we do have Batania installed as well, and a regular campfire. So... My first question is, can I get a regular Minecraft log? Interesting. The uh, mod has changed from Minecraft at the top there to HT's tree chop, and it says one out of 13 chops. That seems like a lot of chops, but now it's two out of 11, so it's gone down. And this log is getting smaller every time we break it. I really hope that we don't have to do this for every single log, although I would assume that if we were to, um, gosh, look at that, it's a very uh, precarious tree there. I assume that if we were to do this with an X, it might take fewer chops. Oh, okay, so it takes the whole tree down with it. That makes sense. And then, oh, we still have to right click to pick things up, eh? Interesting. Oh, but we can also shift to, uh, to pick things up that are nearby as well. Okay, sure. So we need to take all this, and I'm assuming that we can uh, get like a regular Minecraft chest, although that is usually quite a big assumption. If I do this, we can indeed make a vanilla Minecraft chest, which is very handy because our inventory is currently filled with all of these elements, and I think we might need them. So what I might do real quick is head back through using the temp pad again to the uh, nothingness dimension, just to grab all of those remaining elements in case we, uh, we need them going forward. Not that they're particularly difficult for us to get. We can, of course, come back at uh, any point in the future, I guess, and make more stars and therefore get more elements, but I feel like we might as well not be wasteful here and just take all of these back with us. I should probably make a, uh, a double chest here because we do have quite a lot of elements. So let's do this and then let's do uh, not that, that, and then now we can drop all of these in here and that's going to handily store all of our elements. Nice. So we've completed the wood quest. We got some silver coins. Presumably we can do something like this and get four planks. Good stuff. Sticks we already have because we got them from the tree when it fell. And then a chest we have already made, but you know, we might as well go ahead and make another one. Uh, that sound right there is me accidentally hitting the V key on my keyboard. So if you're holding the Philosopher's Stone and you press V, it powers up. And if you press Shift and V, it uh, powers down. Not something that's particularly useful for us just yet, but might be useful later on in the pack. We have a quest for wooden hoppers and for better-ish storage. That's a uh, storage drawer. Um, but let's head further down this way for the time being, because right now I don't think we need either a hopper or a storage drawer. So uh, this just wants me to make any old slab. I am going to make a regular Minecraft crafting table 
just because I think it's a little easier to use than the Philosopher's Stone. And so here, let's go and do something like this. That gets us Oak Slabs and some more coins. We then have a Composter, a vanilla Minecraft Composter that is, which unfortunately does require one more slab than what we currently have, but that's fine. Boom, Composter acquired. And so we can use that, of course, to obtain Bone Meal. And over here, first Primitive Fire. We want two fire sticks. The fire sticks can be crafted with regular Minecraft sticks. And uh, we need two of those, or maybe just the one. Interesting. So then the campfire actually isn't too bad. It does require some cobblestone though. And so what we are probably gonna have to do in uh, standard Minecraft fashion is, I was gonna say get ourselves a pickaxe, but I do wonder if our um, void harvester works here. I have a feeling that the void harvester might not also, let me go ahead and, oh, I was gonna try and turn on gravity, but I need to land first before that is possible. Here we go. And then let's just uh, right click there to disable, no, I want to enable gravity. There we go, okay, perfect. So we'll leave gravity enabled because that is gonna make my life a whole heck of a lot easier. But uh, down here, can I use the void harvester on this stone? I totally can, nice. Can I auto mine this? I totally can, fantastic. That is very nice indeed. Of course, we do have to shift to, uh, to pick all this stuff up. And if we want, we can now use our temp pad to, oh no, we can't use our temp pad, but we can just nerd pull out of here. I was gonna say we can use our temp pad to get up to the surface, but we have not yet set uh, a home point in the temp pad here. So let me real quick, right click, run program, new location, uh, earth, home base, boom. All right, it is getting a little bit dark and I don't see any sheep nearby. I don't know if we're playing on peaceful or not. I would assume that we're not, which does make it a little bit trickier. Of course, we could go back to the void dimension if we wanted to, but we'll see how things pan out here. I'm hoping that we, uh, you know, worst case scenario, we can always hide out in our, uh, in our cave, but there's our composter. And then we can make ourselves a regular old furnace. Uh, never mind, the furnace recipe has been tweaked. We need compressed stone from pneumatic craft repressurized. Interesting, okay, so in that case, how in the world are we getting charcoal? While we ponder that question, we do need to uh, to make our way, ideally away from these zombies. How powerful is our void destroyer? Not particularly powerful, although it does inflict darkness to the, uh, to the enemy there. I'm gonna chill out just down in this little hole for a minute. So it looks like we need to make our coal using a Philosopher's Stone and eight carbon. Carbon we can uh, get using the stars. So we'll have to go see if we have eight carbon. If we don't, I assume we could go and get some more fairly easily. This one wants us to obtain mystical petals. I assume that those are just going to be growing on the surface. Smoother rock. <laughs> okay, so we've got Earth's rocky flesh and a smooth criminal. That's uh, some smooth stone right there. All right, I'm not quite sure where we're going with this, but I am intrigued. So we do have to be careful, mostly because there are mobs outside, but mostly due to the fact that the tempad has a cooldown. And so if you try and use it too much back to back, it's going to uh, not going to be a great time. So we have one carbon here, which is not ideal. So what I think we'll do is we'll do a quick bounce back into the void dimension and we'll see if we can't get some more stars to get some more carbon. Okay, so I've managed to get a fair amount of uh, hydrogen and helium. I do, however, need my gravity. If, oh no, okay. I do need the gravity back. And there's a mystical petal, by the way. Um, I do need the gravity. Oh, and I got a shift to pick that up. Of course, I keep forgetting. I'm not gonna get that one, that's fine. I need to just quickly grab a little bit of gravity, preferably without dying. And then I just need to make it to the earth there. And then I can come back through to here where it's nice and safe. I can disable, and by disable, I mean enable gravity. And then now we should be able to uh, peacefully coexist on, on one heart of health. As soon as daytime arises, we do need to find some food, some sustenance to keep us going. But now we can do this and we can start getting even more elements. And uh, ideally here we're looking, oh, these don't stack, that's unfortunate. Um, ideally, we're looking for carbon. Now, uh, of course we can build in here actually. I don't know if that's the intended premise, like to come back here or not but uh, we can take a regular chest and just place it down in this dimension. And so we can start dumping all of our stuff out in here. And I guess we can also make another crafting table back here as well, if we want. 
And then now let's do that. Let's do this. And then if we have the gravity ready to go, we can kind of get all of these elements very quickly. If we just do like throw a bunch of these out and then shift right click with this, it's going to turn the gravity off. They're all going to land. And then we can just shift around here to pick all of these up. That got us five carbon, which unfortunately isn't nine. It does take us to six, but that gets us pretty close. And uh, it should mean that just a few more stars should get us where we want to be. All right, eight carbon acquired. And so now if we do something like this, we should be able to get our first piece of coal. And then from there, it's quite possible that we might have everything we need to get a campfire going. We need three sticks, which we do have one, two, three. And we also need three logs, which we also have one, two, three. So I believe we can put this down in this dimension. We totally can. It is not lit. However, I assume that's what our fire sticks are for. It is indeed nice. Look at that. Okay, so we have lit up the campfire. And oh, it looks like we actually get regeneration by the campfire, which may or may not be a vanilla mechanic. I do not know, but I'm very happy that it exists nonetheless. And so uh, I'm going to quickly heal up here. And once we've got back up to full health, we can head back through to the overworld and see about getting some clay, see about getting some petals. And I believe we can put stuff like saplings into the composter to get bone meal. Okay, so we're back up to a decent amount of HP. I guess we could probably do... I'm going to take the wood back with me. I'll take the uh, the composter as well. And I'll take the saplings, actually. Although, can I do this? I totally can. I don't know how much or how many saplings you need in order to make that happen. It looks like quite a few. I am also going to make an X in the hopes that, that allows me to chop down trees just a little bit faster. Um, although, we should definitely do that with cobblestone and not with wood. And I think while we're at it, I'll also grab a sword as well. I'm not quite sure if time passes in the overworld whilst we're here in the void dimension, but on the off chance that it doesn't, I would like to have uh, a sword with me for when we head back. In hindsight, oh, no, it is dead time, nice. Um, in hindsight, I would have liked to have had a campfire here in the overworld. It would have made it a little easier for us to just regenerate our health. But nevertheless, things are good. Everybody else here is going to burn. That's fine. And so... I will get rid of this spider. We might get some string, which could be useful for making a bed. And of course, I do have to keep remembering that we have to uh, shift in this pack. There is the mystical red flower that we tried to pick up earlier, and we can craft that into a mystical red petal, which the quest wants. It wants any Batania petal. As a reward here, we get a Lexica Batania and a silver coin. And this is the beginning of the Batania side of the quest. Now, before we get too wrapped up in the Batania of it all, I would like to see about getting a little bit of food. And then we also need clay. Um, now, I don't know if the quest mentions anything. Oh, it says can be found while, uh, while mining. I was going to say, because normally you find clay on the surface, kind of just um, near water. But if it can be found while mining, then I guess we can head down here. We do have 4,000 durability on our pickaxe. And if we hold down the Ultimine key, you'll see in the top left, by default, it's set to shipless. If you hold down shift while holding down the Ultimine key and scroll down to, I think, small tunnel is what I want, we can kind of just head forward like this. And that's going to unlock a small tunnel for us, which might allow us to try and find some kind of clay. But we could really do with some torches. <laughs> Creepers do explode and do deal damage to us, I think the uh, quest book said, but they don't actually uh, destroy anything, which is very nice indeed. Uh, chat is, of course, pointing out that we can uh, drop our logs onto the campfire here as a way of getting some charcoal, and we can use that charcoal to get us some... Uh, oh, do we need to keep relighting this thing? Uh, we can use that as a way of getting some torches. Nice. Okay, so we'll take that, and we'll craft up some torches. We could definitely do with coming back with more logs to try and craft even more torches and get even more charcoal for us. Let's see, though, real quick, if... This X is substantially faster when it comes to uh, taking this tree down, or we could probably do actually with uh, getting rid of a few of those cows. To uh, and I can't ultimate this, right? No, I can't. That makes sense. Uh, but we could do with getting a few of those cows just to allow us to uh, to eat. It definitely takes a little while, but it's definitely faster with the X. Hello, my friends. Goodbye, my friend. All right, let's get some food cooking over here. And once that food is cooked, I think we'll also potentially look at getting a, a few more pieces of charcoal as well, just so we can get some more torches 
to aid in our quest for clay. So there's our stake. Let's get uh, four logs on there. And of course, we could use one of the uh, pieces of charcoal to, uh, to get a new campfire. And I think it would be worth having potentially a second campfire here for making things faster, but also maybe a campfire back in, uh, in the overworld as well, just to uh, regenerate uh, some HP if we need to. So I will make two more campfires. I'll put one of them here, and then I'll use my sticks, of course, to light that, and then we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do all of those, and uh, we'll put a few more saplings in over here. There's not really any shortage of saplings, so I don't think it really matters too much if we put all those in, but it does use a lot of saplings, eh? I, uh, I did not think it would use quite so many, but uh, that is a decent amount of charcoal for us, so let's get a few more torches, and let's go see if we can't find a little bit more clay on Earth. So, um, there's a zombie down here. And we do have, by the sounds of it, a mod that adds, like, a reverb to this, which is, uh, is very interesting. And, for whatever reason, I can't put the torches down while I'm holding the, uh, the Void Breaker, or the Void Harvester. I assume that's just due to the way the Void Harvester works, unfortunately. We can obviously try Mining Tunnel here, which actually takes us down, like this. You can dig that, and you got, like, this nice staircase. Of course, I do want to make sure, before we go any further, that I, uh, drop down my campfire, like that. We can always relight that when we come back, and then let's head on down here and see if we can't find a little bit of clay. Oh! Alright! Um, I did find some clay. Bizarrely. I don't know, I just mined accidentally in, in a mining tunnel formation here, part way down this tunnel, and we found clay, which is, um, very nice indeed. Um, I'm not quite sure how far away it was, I didn't actually see the clay, but I broke the clay, and we got the clay, so I'm happy to, uh, to have that. It is a little dark outside. I did make another uh, campfire down here because I was hiding out from the mobs who are up on the surface there. Um, I guess we can continue hiding for, uh, for a minute here. And uh, now that we have the clay, we have the ability to make clay shears, or ceramic shears, I should say. These seem like they're going to be useful because they're going to allow us to shear leaves off trees, and we can use those leaves in the composter to get burn meal. And you get a lot more leaves from a tree than you do saplings from a tree, so that seems like that would be very useful for us. Then we can also make bricks, and we can uh, continue on this side of the quest book, but it looks like we are kind of headed down into the Britannia section here, which does begin with the Petal Apothecary, which is actually a uh, super easy item to craft, and in fact, we can go ahead and craft the Petal Apothecary here in our little cave. Nice. We do need water in order to make the Petal Apothecary work, and the idea here is that, as we saw earlier, the recipe for a vanilla Minecraft furnace is a little tricky. It requires compressed stone from Pneumaticraft, which we're a little ways away from being able to make. And so instead, if we want to turn regular cobblestone into smooth stone, in this pack, we can also use the Pure Daisy. We can turn regular stone into smooth stone, and we can turn cobblestone into regular stone, and the Pure Daisy, you guessed it, can be made using the Petal Apothecary. So uh, we could really do with finding a sheep of some persuasion, so we could try and get a bed to allow us to sleep through the night. But let's see if we can't find some white Batania flowers. So these are regular Minecraft flowers. Those are not what we're after. We are specifically looking for mystical white flowers, which is not you either. They look like the other Batania flowers that we saw earlier. Gosh, the baby zombies are so fast comparatively. And I can't really see too far away. I think I do. Oh no, these are still just daisies. That's not what we want. We need a Minecraft mystical white flower. There are other ways for us to get the petals if we don't happen to find any, but it would make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier if we just found some. Of course, it doesn't really matter too much if we get lost, because worst case scenario here, we can use the tempad to teleport back either to the void dimension or to, um, to our earth spawn. That's a mystical gray flower. I will harvest that real quick. Uh, but that's not what we're after. We're after mystical white flowers, which I think I see over here. I do. Give me that flower. Give me this flower. Give me one more flower, two more flowers, and then get me out of here. I want to get out so bad, but I'm they're going to hit me so fast. I don't even know. Okay, this is fine, I think. This is fine. Use the tempad. Run program, uh, void nothingness, teleport, and we just gotta make the jump, and we made it. Okay, so, now that we're over in the void dimension, 
um, we actually can't do much with this because we need water, right? In order for the petal apothecary to work. Although this looks like it doesn't need any water. So let me see about using it without water. If I just put this down like this, we can craft the mystical white flowers into mystical white petals. And then if I drop four of these in here, one, two, three, four. So it looks like I was right in that we do need water here. You can't put the uh, the petals in. Like I dropped them in earlier, but that's uh, they weren't actually landing in. They were just sitting on top of the block. So can we get water? We can turn ice into water and we can make water with H2O and a bucket. I do wonder if there's another, like we, we can combine two hydrogen and one oxygen to get water. I do then wonder, oh, I see we can craft a wooden bucket. Interesting. Okay, so we need to take our oak logs, craft a wooden bucket, and then we need some hydrogen and we also need some good old fashioned oxygen as well, which we do have. We'll take that and then over in here, we should be able to make water, we can. And then we can use that to make a wooden bucket of water by doing this and this. We can take that and right click it on here. We can then drop in one, two, three, four, our four mystical petals. You'll know you've done it right when you see the recipe with the tick right there. And then all you need is a seed, drop that in as well, and you get a pure daisy. Nice. So the pure daisy does need to be placed down on dirt, I believe, like we can't place it down onto the void nothingness. So instead we will harvest a block and place down our dirt. Then we can place down our pure daisy and I'll harvest the uh, quarks and whatnot while we're at it. And we'll drop those into our uh, chest here. But now that we have the pure daisy, we should be able to take our cobblestone, place that down around the pure daisy like so. And after about a minute, about 60 seconds, actually it might be like 90 seconds. So maybe a minute and a half that should transform that cobblestone into regular stone. Actually, it's a lot faster by the looks of it in this pack. And then after another period of time, it should transform into smooth stone. There we go. We can then go ahead and, oh, I don't want to go too far. Apparently I went a little too far. That's fine. We only need one smooth stone to complete the quest and become a smooth criminal. And then we need living rock, which I think is what we're actually after. The transformation is very quick between smooth stone and living rock, but I'll harvest all of that because that is yet another quest to complete. And that of course is going to allow us to make the mana pool from Batania, which looks like this. We can place that down somewhere over here for the time being. We'll come back to that as and when we need it. And now we've got powdered magic. The recipe shows the block needs to be under the mana pool, the items that need to be tossed into the mana pool. So mana powder, Oh, I see. So we need everything that's underneath the mana pool, which we do have currently because we're in this dimension. And then we need cosmic dust, which we can make from our star. We drop that in and we get the mana powder. And as a reward here, we do get five black lotuses, which give you a ton of mana, which is very nice indeed. In order to get our initial batch of mana, we are going to need an endo flame. And we're also going to need this guy, the uh, living wood, which I'm assuming we're then going to use to make the mana spreader. So the Endo Flame is again made in the Petal Apothecary, this time with mystical brown flowers, a light gray flower, and a red flower. So I think I did harvest some light gray flowers. Never mind, I guess I broke them, but I didn't actually pick them up. We do have a red petal, which is good, and it might be daytime over in the overworld. It is. These guys are all gonna burn, slowly but surely, which is very nice to see. So we need to find Light gray, well, first of all, hello. There we go, fantastic. <laughs> I love the sound effect. Uh, first of all, I wanna smelt, I didn't realize witches don't die in the sun. I wanna smelt um, some food up. So I'll do this real quick. Uh, once we've got a little bit of food, we could do with finding some light gray petals, which might be right there actually, now that I think about it, it might be dead ahead. And we also need to find some brown petals as well. All right, so I have managed to uh, gather both light brown and gray petals. I've also managed to cook up some steak as well, so we're not going to starve. Let's head back through into here. The Twitch chat does make a good point in that we should probably look to set up an unlimited water source, if an unlimited water source is possible, because that's going to allow us to get unlimited water without having to go through the rigmarole of getting the hydrogen and the oxygen every single time. So if we do this and this, that's just gonna give us some more space to dump all of this back into 
the chest. And so now hydrogen we have, oxygen we do have. And so if we take our Philosopher's Stone, can we once again get a little bit of water? We can, ideally two water, perfect. And so with that, I'm hopeful that we can get our first bucket and place that down somewhere around here. I guess we'll put it down directly behind the Petal Apothecary. So I'll put one here. It doesn't work. Ooh. So I wonder if that is, I'm gonna look like a fool here if I do it in the overworld and it also doesn't work. I don't know if that's just a void thing or if that's a pack thing. It's just a void thing. Interesting, okay. That's fine. It means we need to get a bit more oxygen, but once we have, and actually we have one oxygen there. Actually, never mind. yeah, we're fine. We've got loads of oxygen. This is not gonna be a problem. Uh, we should be able to make one more water. We can craft that up with the wood, like so, and then drop that down over here. Okay, so in that case, it probably makes sense to move a lot of our Britannia stuff back through to the overworld. It makes little sense to keep it all in here, simply due to the fact that um, we don't want to be going backwards and forwards every time that we want to, uh, to get water. So I'll pick up a lot of the Britannia stuff and we'll take that through to the overworld. Also, I do want to grab some of this clay and see if we can't make those ceramic shears. To make the ceramic shears, we need two ceramic shear parts, which need two clay shear parts, which is just two clay. So we do one, two, three, four, take two of those. And then can I smelt those on a campfire? I totally can, perfect. So uh, let's light you using our trusty fire sticks and then one and two. Fantastic, we'll take both of those. Uh, the pack creator is in the Twitch chat and he said water poured into space outside of a spacecraft would rapidly vaporize or boil, which makes a tremendous amount of sense when you, uh, when you think about it. So now we should be able to take these shears and in theory, we should be able to shear a whole tree's worth of leaves. Oh, so the Ultimine doesn't work, unfortunately, but we can still shear this very quickly. And of course, shift to pick all of this up. And then if we take those back through to the Void Dimension, we should then be able to get our first bone meal. Nice, there we go, we got some bone meal. We can of course shift to pick that up. That's gonna be another quest complete. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine maybe? Oh, is it random? Interesting. Okay, so we got a few bone meal. We can use that if we want to make some floor fertilizer, I assume. But we were trying to make the endo flame, which I think we can now do back through in the overworld. So back here, let's grab our petal apothecary. Let's place that down once again next to our water. Let's fill that up with water like so. And then if my memory serves me correctly, we needed two brown, two light gray, and one red. Two brown, two light gray, one red is incorrect. So my memory did not serve me well there. It's, uh, oh, it's two brown, one light gray, one red. You can shift right click to take these out. Uh, so we need two brown, uh, which is not like that. Two brown, one red, there we go. And then we can drop in the wheat seed and we get an endo flame. The endo flame is super nifty in that this is kind of like a fuel burning generator from any other mod. You put fuel next to it and it will take that fuel and burn it and in return it will produce mana, which is what we need if we're gonna get the powdered magic. But before that, we need to get ourselves some living wood and the living wood we get by putting regular logs down around the pure daisy. So let's drop you down there. And then we only have two logs currently and I'm almost certain that we're going to need more than two logs very shortly. I have been told that we should be able to grow some trees fairly quickly using shift. So let me take some of these and then let's go see about growing some. We could definitely do with getting a ton of torches and putting those down around our base. Yeah, look at that, fantastic. We could do with putting down a bunch of torches around our base in the overworld here so that we don't have to uh, cower away when the night comes. We could also do with getting a bed as well, but I've yet to see any sheep at all. I've seen a ton of cows and a couple of horses and of course a lot of uh, zombie skeletons and creepers, but uh, absolutely no, no sheep. Over here, we can see that our first few living wood did transform, and uh, we can go ahead and harvest those to get that living wood. And 
I assume that we're now going to unlock the recipe, yes, for the mana spreader, which here requires six living wood, one cosmic ingot, and one petal. So the cosmic ingot, you smelt cosmic dust on the campfire. Interesting. That makes sense. Let's go ahead and harvest this. We do need to go back to shapeless in our FTB menu, so we can harvest all of that at the same time. And then let's just quickly pop on back through into here so that we can uh, potentially uh, hide away a little bit while we wait for, uh, for night to pass. And of course, while we wait, we can look at getting some more cosmic dust. So we do need to get yet another star here. Do we have the hydrogen and helium required? We've got some hydrogen here. You can double click uh, on the search bar and that will highlight any ingredients that you might need. Unfortunately, we don't have any helium. Uh, if we try the same again with hydrogen, we don't have much hydrogen either, which is unfortunate. However, we do have quite a few of these uh, quarks and electrons. And so it's quite possible that we uh, can get another atom going. Of course, we need to first craft the uh, the protons. Uh, oh, it looks like we're missing gluons. There's some gluons there. We probably do need more of them though, if we're gonna get a lot of hydrogen going. All right, there is a bunch of helium. Once again, let's grab you, let's do this and this. We'll get some helium as well to go along with that hydrogen. I think I said helium twice there, but I meant hydrogen. And then from there, we can get a star or potentially multiple stars if we really want. And of course, that's going to get us the cosmic dust, which we can place onto our campfire just as soon as we grab our fire sticks. One, two, three, four. Not quite sure how many of the cosmic ingots we're going to need, but I feel like having a couple of extra isn't going to hurt us. And then from there, we should be pretty much good to go, actually. As long as we have one mystical petal lying around, which we do, we've got the gray flower here. We can take that and we can craft that up in here along with our cosmic ingot and six living wood, that's gonna get us our mana spreader. And the only other thing that we might potentially need here, which I don't see in the quest book, but we might want to get is a wand of the forest, which you can get by crafting three living wood twigs with two petals. And the living wood twigs, you can get by just crafting two living wood together. So I'm gonna assume that it's still dark out here, which is unfortunate. I do wonder, actually if we can grow trees in the void dimension let me give that a try if i take some dirt and i take my saplings can i grow trees here i totally can they are very dark which is a bit unsettling but it does make it a little easier for us to harvest wood while we wait for the night to pass now i think i can shift right click if i turn this gravity Disabled. If I shift right click, I can send the other mobs. Look at that. I can send all of the other mobs into the sky. That actually helps out so much more than I thought it would with mob control because now I can just come over here and I can put down all of my logs whilst all of those mobs just aimlessly float into the void. And also, I guess, all the entities as well, like gravel that I do as well. But that's perfect. Being able to turn the gravity off at a moment's notice is, uh, is real nice because we do need. These, uh, these living wood. Of course, there goes our axe, which is unfortunate, but we can break everything else without the axe. Uh, but now we can take our living wood. We can craft that into living wood twigs, I believe. And we have to do that over here, which requires just two living wood logs. We want these guys. I want one, two, three of those. Once we have three of those, we can do this and this, and we get a wand of the forest. You can use any color petals and that will affect the color of the wand. As you can see here, you can even mix and match your color if desired, but for us, any will do. And so now what we should be able to do here um, is turn the gravity off for us. Make sure the gravity is still on for everybody. Uh, turn the gravity on for us. Make sure it's still off for everybody else. And then what we want to do is we want to take our mana spreader and place that down near our end of flame like this. And then you can see if they're connected using the uh, wand of the forest, which is why you need this. If you don't have it, you uh, can't see if the end of flame is connected. If you do have it, you'll see there is a little X next to the mana spreader while looking at the end of flame. All you have to do, uh, right click on the end of flame and then shift right click on the mana spreader and that will link the end of flame to the mana spreader. And so now, whenever this generates mana, whenever we drop fuel onto it, like this, it's gonna burn that and generate mana, send that mana to the mana spreader. As you can see, that's filling up that green bar. And then from there, all we need to do is grab our mana pool, which should be in here. It is indeed. And if we place that down and connect the mana spreader to it, that's gonna send mana to the mana pool. So if we do this, B, 
because we've put it in line, it is going to send it automatically. If you wanted to put your mana pool anywhere that wasn't directly in front of the mana spreader, you could do the same thing. You can shift right click and then right click and it will move the mana spreader to point wherever you want it to point. For us though, this is working. We do, according to the quest, have to put an everything this block underneath this, like so. And then we do also need some cosmic dust in order to make this a reality. And we can drop it into the mana pool to get our mana powder. Nice, okay, cool. That gets us the black lotuses and the silver coins. The black lotuses here, you can drop into the mana pool to get a big boost to the amount of mana that you have. So you'll see right now, we've got a tiny little blue sliver on the left-hand side of the mana pool. If we drop in the black lotus, that's gonna give us this big boost of mana, which is gonna be, I think, incredibly useful for the early game here. Um, all those creepers are just kind of hanging out, eh, until we uh, get rid of them, which is a little bit unfortunate. But uh, next up, the quest book wants us to craft a cauldron, which we can do with iron and a mana pool. And I assume that we might not be too far away from potentially unlocking a new act here. I'm interested to see where this pack goes, but I think, unfortunately, chat, we are out of time for this episode of Universe IO. Real quick, before I go, some people in the Twitch chat have been asking about the accessibility pack. I'll put that on real quick just to show you what it looks like in the void dimension with the accessibility tweak on. So it just adds these white lines here, which make it a little easier to see what's going on in the void dimension. Let me know if you're watching this on YouTube in the comments, uh, whether you prefer it with the resource pack on or without the resource pack on. And uh, let me know what you think of the pack so far as well. For now though, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of Universe IO there.